This question says that an organic compound has the following composition by mass. Okay, so they give us the composition by mass. And then they say the molar mass is twice the empirical molar mass. So let's quickly remind you empirical and molecular. So let's say you have an empirical formula of C3H7O4. Can these numbers be simplified? No, they can't. That is why we call this the empirical formula. It is the most simplified ratio that you can get. Now, the molecular mass would always be a multiple of that. So maybe it is triple. So maybe it's c 9 h 21 O twelve. 12 So maybe this is the molecular mass, which is what it looks like in real life, but this is the simplified mass, okay? So in this question, they said that it's twice. So this would maybe become like C6, H14, and O8. Now, if you had to simplify this, you would just go back to the empirical. Okay, so I hope that reminds you the difference between empirical and molecular. Empirical is the simplified one, the molecular is not simplified. Okay, so the first question says define the term empirical formula. So it is the simplest whole number ratio between the elements of a compound. So these are just the simplified, I mean sorry, this one over here, it's the simplified whole number ratio of all of the elements, okay? Now the next question says, for a five marks, determine by calculation the molecular formula. Okay, so we first use this to get the empirical, and then we use extra information such as this to get the molecular. Okay, and this is easy marks, guys. Um, molecular empirical formula, it's just a specific way you gotta do it, but it's usually not that difficult. Okay, so let's go through the steps. So you would definitely need a um, periodic table, but I'll just give you these masses. So on the periodic table, carbon is 12, hydrogen is one, oxygen is 16. Okay, so the first thing to do is to realize that they told us that these are the percentages by mass. Now, what we do is the following. If you add all of these numbers together, what should it give you? Well, 100, because percentage always adds up to 100. So what we will rather do is we will just pretend that this is not percentage, let's rather pretend that it's grams, okay? So that means that we then have 54.54.54 um, Five, five grams of carbon. It then means we have 9.09 .09 grams of hydrogen. Okay, and then for oxygen, that would be 36.36 grams. The next step is to convert each of those into moles by using the N equals to M over capital M formula. And so for carbon, that would be 54.55 over 12. For hydrogen, that would be 9.09 .09 over one, and for oxygen, that would be 36.36 .36 over 16. Okay, now if we go calculate each of those, we end up with 4.54. You can just keep two decimals, it's really not that important um, with this part. And then for hydrogen, you're just gonna get 9.09, .09. and then for this one over here, you're gonna get 2.27. What we then do is we take the smallest number, which is gonna be the 2.27, and so you're gonna divide all of them by that number. So you're gonna say 4.54 divided by 2.27, which is two. Then you're gonna say 9.09 .09 divided by 2.27, which is which is pretty much four, and then you're gonna say 2.27 divided by 2.27, and that is one, and there are your answers, okay? So what it means is that we are gonna have C2H4O. That is the empirical formula. That is your empirical, okay? But now they told us that the molar mass of the actual compound, which is the molecular, is twice the empirical. So you're gonna double each of those. So the molecular is then gonna be C4H8O2. Um, you see how we multiplied each of those by two, so C4H8O2.
Okay, if you are using the memo of this exam paper, they did make a mistake. When they calculated this part, they said the answer is three, okay? But you can go double check that for yourself. It is exactly four, okay?